This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Example 4 on page 54. Limonus and Christina. The figures are as normal. Limonus has proposed a dividend of 16. Christina proposes a dividend of 10. Both of these were proposed before the year end, but they haven't been adjusted for. Limonus acquired 90% of Christina four years ago when the balance on Christina's retained earnings was 30,000. Value of the NCI shareholding at the date of acquisition was 55. Working one. Ninety percent, ten percent. Working two cost, the cost of the investment was fifty. The value of the NCI investment is given to us as 5,500. The total worth of Christina, 55,500. The fair value of the subsidiary net assets at date of acquisition shares of 20 retained earnings 30 There are no fair value adjustments, so 50,000 of the subsidiary fair valued net assets at date of acquisition. Goodwill on acquisition was therefore 5,500, and it is impaired. In bold, at the end of the line in bold, it says goodwill is impaired by 80%. So the goodwill at the end of the period is 1,100. No need for you to write this down. Current assets are 36 and 64. Retained earnings are 40 and 50. Payables are 9 and 10. And we have a dividend to propose. Christina's proposing a dividend of 10,000. So 10 comes out of retained earnings and adds on to payables. Immediately, Limonus says, well, I want 9 of that 10. So 9 goes into receivables and into retained earnings.
And now cancel 9 against 10 and leave 1. Limanus proposes a dividend of 16. It's coming out of retained earnings and adding on to payables. That's what you should now have on your question paper. Down the bottom of page 54, it's actually done for you. The same extracts that I've just written on the bottom of the screen are down at the bottom of page 54, halfway down page 54. So now we're in the position to do working three. Well, the question, 40 and 50. But that figure of 50 for Christina, we've adjusted that. You can see from your question paper, if you've written the dividend in, you can see that we've adjusted this 50 by taking out 10 for the dividend. That 50 has been adjusted. The same as the 40 has been adjusted in Limanus. So per the question, 40 and 50, but we've got proposed dividends. Or dividends payable, whatever you want to write there. 16 dividend is coming out of Limanus and 10 dividend is coming out of Christina. And proposed dividends receivable is 9 coming into Limanus. And that working 3 now reflects these adjustments that we've made at the top of the screen. There may, in an exam, there may also be fair value adjustments. There may be PUPs on intercompany trading. There may be excess depreciation where assets are being transferred. There may be all sorts of adjustments to be making within working three. But there aren't in this example. So the adjusted and therefore the retained earnings are now 33 and 40. And I need to take away the pre -ax. 30,000 for Christina. And therefore post -ac is 10. H is own, 33, plus H is share, 90%, of S post act retained, 10, so H's share of 10 is 9, gives me 42. Less goodwill impaired since acquisition.
4,400, wasn't it? Times 90%. Just our share. 4,400 times 90%, I think it's 3,960. Gives me 38,040. Consolidated retained earnings. NCI the value at date of acquisition was 5,500 They want their share of S post ac retained. S post ac retained, just there is, is 10, and the NCI want their share of that 10%. 10% of 10 is just 1, isn't it? So 6,500, less their share of the goodwill. Impaired since acquisition. Consolidated statement of financial position. Income working to eleven hundred. Oh then assets twenty three and sixteen. Current assets, 36 and 64. What about the dividend receivable? What about the dividend receivable? Surely that should be a current asset as well. Let's just go and look again at your question paper because this is what you've written on your question paper. Oh, we did affect the current assets, but then we cancelled. We did put nine as a dividend receivable into the parent company's current assets, but then we cancelled that nine against nine of the ten payables. So current assets hasn't changed. Retained earnings has, payables has, but the intergroup receivable dividend has no effect on our current assets. Shares always oh, only ever the parent. Retained earnings, we've actually calculated that in working three thirty eight zero four oh. NCI, we've done a calculation in working for 
Current liabilities, 9 and 10. We've got the dividends. Now, I tend to show these separately. I've got a proposed dividend payable to Lyman as his own shareholders of 16. But I've also got an NCI proposed dividend, the uncancelled element from the subsidiary. They've got a 1,000 of that 10,000 dividend. Just quick addition, one ten, twenty, thirty, one hundred and forty thousand one hundred. 